Very delighted to have you back to this our show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And we're broadcasting live from this our place in the middle, the center of the earth, most remote from all other land masses in Honolulu, Hawaii. And usually we have our co-host Soto Brown with us here at the foothills of Diamond Hill, uh, Diamond Head, sorry, the hill of Diamond Head. That's where he grew up. And that's where he is right now and not in his Bishop Museum at work because his way past 100 years young mother um, is not feeling too well. She has some cough. He said it's not too serious, but he is kindly watching her. So it's gonna, just going to be you and me, me further down uh, that foothills of uh, the most iconic uh, postcard uh, scenery of a volcano, of an urban volcano that's not active anymore. So if we can get the first slide up, um, we want to think above and beyond our very wide horizon that somehow limits us. And for that reason, we get us out into other places. And in this uh, volume of shows, it is the city of Chicago, which for some reasons we seem to mimic or imitate recently as far as the built environment is concerned. And uh, this uh, moment I captured here from a few days ago gave me a chance to think about that a little bit more because I had two hours here to wait for the towing truck that you see at the top right coming. And this is all thanks to uh, our uh, magic mechanic, Larry, who takes so uh, great uh, care of us and us is in this case that we have our consultant, our uh, exotic escapism expert, Susanna, uh, with us uh, this time for uh, some while, and our teenage boys. And Larry set us up with his mobile, uh, which is, we borrow this from our to be continued shows about uh, cars and architecture, uh, mobile and immobile. Uh, and uh, this is the new mobile, which we had to get because they live out on the other side over the Kulau Mountains in Kailua. And in order to get around, uh, we should use the bus, uh, but are we better than anyone else? Uh, Larry set us up with a car that he had been sitting for a while. And so he made it all nice again, but just like with people, uh, as a German saying is, wer rostet, der rostet, which I usually give to Soto the uh, German uh, lesson of the week. That means, as you can figure, if you're sitting around, uh, you're rusting. And so it was with the car. And uh, so here it basically uh, quit uh, when we were at the entrance of Kualo Basin and in that entrance of that paid parking lot. And it was busy uh, uh, morning work day. So all the towing trucks were around. So we had to wait for two hours only, uh, thanks to AAA and the towing company again, well taken care of us, but we had some time to think about it. So this uh, mobile is not easy breezy as you can tell, but you can roll down the windows, which we did. And it always surprises me, do that to yourself. If you drive to work, watch out how many people or few people I have to say, how the windows roll down here in paradise where we have heat waves everywhere. Ron Lindgren, hi Ron, we just talked about California is gonna be hit, 125 predicted. Uh, Lake Mead's uh, uh, water level is the lowest ever. We had uh, and still have uh, heat uh, waves and drought in Europe, all across Europe. They're predicting that to be the standard over the years. Uh, in Germany, back home, where we're facing the winter with uh, Putin's gas not available anymore to heat us, trying to find alternatives, scratching our heads. It's not going to happen on the river as a means of transportation anymore because the Rhine River is almost dried up just like the Colorado River is that feeds you, Ron. So we're, we're in big trouble everywhere uh, in the world. So um, we have to work on that. Uh, Sustainability-wise is kind of the key word, the buzzword for that one. So um, obviously, we uh, shouldn't even drive cars anymore. And um, again, uh, we are driving too much. We is us included. We're not any better, but at least we're thinking about it. So by the two hours that we were waiting there, I was uh, watching and looking around and on the bottom right, uh, this was behind us. This is in the park. You see what we call urban nomads. Usually people call them homeless. And they are really the ones who are the most sustainable. We have the options and we don't use them 
they don't have the options or they choose to not have the options. Uh, many don't choose, they get chosen for them. And so uh, this is the condition they live in. And I just got the weekly newsletter by Senator uh, Stanley Chang, who's tackling that uh, greatly. And so don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to romanticize homelessness. Uh, never would I do that because what do I know about it? But if we look at it in sort of an observatory way, uh, they are living on the smallest carbon footprint. They're not having the fossil fuel consumption that we're having. They're living outdoors. They're not having AC. They're recycling. You see them here recycling all the water bottles here. So they're actually, and that's why we call them urban nomads. And we're thinking in our research, how can we cultivate that urban nomadism that people are not being looked down upon, but being looked up at because that's what they deserve because they save the world for us. If we would all live like that, we would have a better world. But the way we live is what we see on the picture on the left. And this is uh, in the front. Uh, once again, Howard Hughes's uh, recent, most recently finished tower by, here's the connection to the other Winded City, Chicago, by its currently most famous um, and productive architect, Jeannie Gang, uh, with her firm Studio Gang. And in the distance, we have Howard Hughes's uh, so far first attempt, and there's another one coming up. It's uh, a new project, a new tower proposed that's trying to be affordable. That tower there in the back, and we can get to the second slide for that because we see an early rendering of that at the bottom right in that uh, show quote. This is that affordable uh, tower, K Kilohana or something it's called, um, uh, workforce uh, tower, uh, warehousing the workforce. A rather cynical approach, uh, DeSoto and I came to the conclusion when we did the show that we show quote here, because you basically box people, lock them away in these generic rooms uh, with um, one window and a massive giant fossil fuel uh, wall unit AC uh, machine in front of it. To then, if they get claustrophobic, they can go up to these what they call common areas. And that's what we see down there. Uh, if we look at the uh, top right show quote, please, Eric. Uh, that's something that we're operating under the uh, framework and circumstances of. This is a war going on at too many places in the world, and this is the Ukraine war. And that uh, last thing we ended on in, in, the, in the previous show, uh, volume, volume three, was the blow-through floor of Gini Gang's uh, newest tower, the Vista Tower or St. Regis Tower in Chicago that we're going to return to soon. And there's one feature in there that's called the blow through. Uh, this one at the top right is the tragic blown through floor because this is where missiles and rockets basically, you know, uh, get sent into people's dwellings and kill them. As uh, you know, unfortunately, the little people who no one knows, you hardly ever have any connection. But if it's someone famous like that German news uh, up there who's a movie star and when she dies then that unfortunately gets 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 more attention and more awareness so so that's what we find in the ukraine uh, and uh, the only really uh, blow through floor that can be inhabited uh, show quote top left uh, eric if you can zoom into that is the atlantis uh, condominium uh, that plays, uh, we talked about uh, Hawaii Five O, where the original series, the pioneering heyday mid-century architecture plays a role. It's almost a character. That building is in the opening scene of Miami Vice uh, from the 80s, and that building is from 1982. and actually has a performative uh, blow um, through floor or because there's a spiral staircase in there and a jacuzzi and a palm tree. On these uh, only scratching the surface uh, uh, common lanais on the K Kilohana, uh, we don't, we're not so sure uh, how often people spend time there. It's very windy, there's no wind protection. And we made the polemic uh, proposition to say they should have inverted that and make the whole thing basically be the blow through. And then when there's a storm coming, uh, you have a safe room, almost like uh, you uh, retract into a coconut 
on a palm tree because the palm tree is the tree that DeSoto in the recent discussion we had pointed out is the tree that is the most perfectly adjusted to uh, uh, survive and sustain the winds in our sometimes uh, very windy city tropics. Uh, next slide, please. That is the um, St. Regis uh, Tower, formerly called um, uh, Vista Tower by Jeannie Gang in Chicago. And there is this blow through floor that caught a lot of attention in the news and in the public because it's what the engineers basically found out not after the fact, but pretty late in the design process, they need some uh, additional uh, measures uh, to uh, have the building be uh, not just safe, uh, but also be uh, not swing and swinging in the wind up there. Uh, there's a building in Waikiki close to uh, Holbron Street by um, Joe Paul Rongstedt that only has one unit per floor that's currently um, being uh, in the press because the uh, eclectic elevator on its backside um, constantly breaks so people have no way to get up into the building uh, and so that gets the building in trouble and that building I heard of someone who knows someone who knows someone who lives in the top floor and at a very windy day you can feel uh, the building moving again is that a problem a palm tree works like that actually it's not a problem so maybe it's our um, our humankind to think things need to be sturdy and there shouldn't be sway and we need to sort of fight the swinging and sway. Uh, to the right side, uh, you see show quotes from uh, once again the Koula. Uh, De Soto lets uh, you guys know that um, it is uh, named after sugarcane, we know that, but it's red sugarcane. Uh, he made the comment that we don't see any red on the building, maybe that would have been too postmodern, which he at least on the surface doesn't want to be. But we encourage uh, the firm of Genie Gang to be more performative. At least we have to say, and this is what Ron always gives it the credit, it has lanai's. Although when we were sitting there uh, or around our, we call it also um, our just legal turned legal age uh, mobile because it is a 2001 and DeSoto just before the show when he told me about his mother, he uh, told me that a special license plate we have is one that everyone can have. You just order a license plate that has some space on the left that you can put a sticker on. You can buy one from his museum, the Bishop Museum. Or in that year, very appropriate, you have the America United uh, sticker that was commemorating the attack on the uh, World Trade Centers, the tragic terrorist attack. So this is a 2001, so that sticker was fairly uh, current uh, at that time. And I was, again, getting out of the car because different than our other more easy breezy uh, convertible SL, which um, gives you more breeze. And here it got too hot for me because rolling down the windows isn't enough. There's too much uh, surface to be basically um, hit by the sun and the wind can't get through. And it's similar to the building, because if I look closer at it, the lanai's maybe don't even deserve the term lanai. They're basically more loggias as we introduce the term. These are lanai's who are basically carved into the building mass and are not sticking out. What we're seeing now here, thanks Eric at the top right, is the aqua tower that was um, Jeannie's coming out in Chicago in 2009. So both buildings basically have um, lanai's, but the Aqua Tower has actually the most lanai's. And here's the point, uh, the one on the left, the newest, the St. Regis, doesn't have lanai's at all. And that is uh, somehow, again, questionable. Uh, for sure, Chicago has that climate of not just the heat, which uh, is at times hotter than we have it here in Honolulu. Whenever people say, oh, it's so hot, we can increasingly say, no, it is not, because there are places, and unfortunately, thanks or not to climate change, uh, increasingly more places in the world where it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, and we still have the trades blowing, although things change here too. And of course, it feels hotter than it used to be in previous years, but the extent of increasing isn't just as bad as in other places. So um, Chicago has these heat waves with 120 something, 
And then what do you do in this tower here, right? Um, there is um, the question uh, of um, basically the, the summer thermal comfort in a post-fossil way, because it's pretty much, as we will see further down, when we look at the building more, it's fixed glazing. So how do you get yourself uh, cooled down in the summertime other than using fossil fuel, which is increasingly problematic on an economical uh, sector uh, of the Putin uh, acts and, and ecologically anyways. Uh, the winter condition might be not so problematic because that's when you have a really cold and when you have the sun out there, that sun can basically help uh, staying warm in the summertime. But again, right now we have the summer condition, uh, sorry, in the winter time. Now, right now we have the summer condition and uh, it's probably only bearable uh, in that tower if you have the fossil fueled uh, AC blasting. Uh, what can we maybe take from this uh, as an example for our Honolulu here? Well, obviously not building like that for uh, because we have that summer condition all year round, the end of the summer, as that uh, legendary movie uh, pointed out to us. So what else do we do? Next slide. Uh, our propositions are the primitivas. The primitivas are these buildings who are all open. They all blow through, not just horizontally, but vertically here. They work with uh, carbon um, basalt and a carbon basalt um, um, lava rods and, and cables as a local material of an innovative kind that you can net uh, uh, structures and then uh, put netting in between. So the building is breathable uh, all the way around. And the show quote at the top right points out the reference to the ones of us who are sailing, because if there's a storm out there on the ocean, what do you do? You are not netting another layer of tarp um, on your sail, which is what code requires conventional buildings to do. They say, oh, we're going to have category five hurricanes and worse, so we got to thicken the glass. Well, that is making uh, uh, nature more angry. We did a little bit more of our homework. I used to say to my emerging generation, in order to basically make sand into glass, you got to melt it, which is basically what it is. And I said, you need a thousand degrees. Uh, I looked it up in Fahrenheit, it's 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit you need uh, as to make glass. And that is a huge carbon footprint. I mean, you're not using that, you know, mostly traditionally. The power source to make that was fossil, uh, unless you make that with post-fossil off-the-grid um, energy, um, you have a big carbon footprint. And not to speak about the shipping and the installing and the cleaning and then having to keep yourself um, cool behind with a fossil fueled AC. So fixed glazing has a huge carbon footprint and cold again, then making nature more angry reacts in the most silly way and saying, well, we make the glass even stronger. Well, that's a vicious circle, right? Which uh, Primitivas wants to break that and this is all open. And then again, in the case of a hurricane, you have a safe room in the shaft of the building so this is our what, our learning curve, what we learned from blow through. It just encourages and basically almost the uh, the Vista Tower uh, St. Regis is basically endorsing this our proposition of blow through because that's what the engineers had just confirmed with and in that building. Uh, next slide, please. We are now looking at the base of the building that the St. Regis stands on. And as we made an indication some shows ago here, the whole city of Chicago is basically bumped up, jacked up uh, on a massive uh, sub uh, structure. And that you see here, and this is where all the services go. And whenever we have traffic jams here in the morning in Waikiki, all the delivery trucks come and they stall the other traffic. Here, basically, it's separated. All the delivery, all the, you know, uh, bringing things to the buildings and taking things from the building as garbage and even moving trucks and everything happens below, while the uh, usual transportation um, of cars and buses 
happens above. And uh, the material that this is accomplished with is a material uh, that we don't have on the island, we shouldn't have on the island because it's invasive, it doesn't grow here, there's no steel tree. A steel is a material that needs um, resources um, to uh, its ingredients that we don't have on the island here. So just like glass, it needs to be shipped in. Again, these minerals need to be melted to be made into uh, steel. So it's the same thing. And then uh, we lack the labor, the traditional trained labor for that. Uh, so you need to fly in the labor as well. And that cuts out labor on our islands. So we don't think we should learn or get too excited about steel. I threw in some show quotes up there from uh, references to infrastructural work of our office. This is the tradition here uh, in uh, Honolulu, um, uh, DeSoto and, um, and Don Hibbert once gave a great uh, show that's archived under our Dokomomo playlist where they talked about that the development of Honolulu to the extent that we have it now was only uh, able to be um, accomplished through the streetcars. Yeah, this previous one was a, a project we did, our inaugural project for my hometown, the city of Hanover, light rail, and it is a steel structure. It is a platform of similar kind and the top right was the canopy to a subway station that we also choose to build in steel. But again, uh, this is in this is actually in the you see all of us uh, reconvening here around the turn of the year at the top left, uh, visiting our oldest sons, uh, Joey and Lenny, and they happen to live there. And this is the area that we call the Kohlen pot, which is the coal pot. This is where the heavy steel industry uh, in Germany used to be and to some part still is, although majorly it got outsourced to China as it is the same in uh, the United States. But we don't have any of that in uh, Hawaii not traditionally. And so when we bring it here, it's highly invasive. So we should stay away from that. And next slide. So here, this is surprising. And I would love to have DeSoto next week when we, he comes back, uh, you know, recall this and get a chuckle out of that. Because this, this couldn't show any better how attractive we, and we're still from Chicago, we're like eight, nine hours flight time away, right? So it's far away, but they dream of us. This is on the Chicago River here, uh, a, a boat, a party boat that has some grass skirt on and um, you can order a Mai Tai. And up there, we have been uh, zooming into the name of uh, the boat, and it's called Kona, Illinois, or Kona, Chicago. How funny is that? And then you see our iconic panoramic of the turquoise Pacific Ocean, the palm trees, and you can feel the breeze when you look at that picture here that is uh, on that wooden fence that's covering the not so tropical exotic um, steel structure uh, behind it on which the buildings stand. Uh, next slide. So um, this is a stretch here and I say this up front, uh, please don't accuse us of macho or sexist. It's not intended to be, it's just trying to understand Jeanine's uh, design idea here better which is basically having these uh, thrust tombs, as we learned it in the, in the last show, being upside down and uh, continuous. So that gives this uh, building uh, exterior, it's exciting, a uh, swooping curve. And above the building there, we quote from Ginny's website here, uh, where uh, she is basically confirming that, that it's in a flowing experience. It almost looks like it could dance. And so uh, that dancing um, we see at the very top right of the whole picture here, uh, when Joey and I walked by a T3 VW bus, who are very famous here, uh, there was a, uh, a dashboard hula girl on, in that car. And it made us uh, think when we looked at the building again, maybe the building wants to dance the hula. But discussing this with the Soto again, uh, who is from here versus me, uh, the hula is, of course, a very spiritual dance that has, you know, a, a cultural message to convey. 
Uh, but it's also uh, a biclimatic dance because the skirt, the hula dancer or the loincloth, because it's not just a female dance, uh, male uh, hula dancers are also existing and they wear the loincloth, is very easy breezy. So it's a, it's a clothing that you don't sweat underneath, right? And in these days of the tourist industry trying to keep that alive in their own commercial self-interest, often it's made of synthetic uh, plastic fibers that are made in China. That was not the case indigenously, of course, uh, pre-contact, they were all made out of local material that's biodegradable and that is very easy breezy. So that way, again, maybe just like our tourist industry wants to convey an image of something, uh, something flowing, something dancing, but in the means of methods it's using, it's not so much in line with the original uh, intention um, of that activity. So we're starting to think the same about um, the uh, building here by Jeannie Gang as um, basically um, um, as positive, I would say, and as entertaining, as free flowing, as dancing as it looks like. Uh, wouldn't it be nice me as an occupant in there could do it similarly? And we will talk next time about many things more about the building. Of course, I, as many uh, in my pay rate, and I'm, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm in a pretty nice place. And even coming back to the beginning of the show's full circle, because we're closing now, um, I, um, I, it's all a good problem to have. Whenever we're complaining about things in our daily lives, we're just paying with our money but the people in the Ukraine are currently paying with their lives. So us who are more privileged and more fortunate should again think about the ones who are not so privileged and not so fortunate and the building we're currently keep looking into is not about these people. This is for high-end uh, multimillionaires who are able to live there. Uh, but even them, why would they want to live in something hermetic, uh, AC blowing, couldn't also they dance um, with the flow of the wind in the summer in Chicago as their building does? That's a question we put out there, but we're at the end of exciting 28 minutes. Uh, we hope to have you back for more with the Soto next week again. And until then, please stay tropical, exotic, exotically tropic. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.